When watching this video, we assume you've watched our synopsis video on the total knee replacement guidelines where I'll go over the rehab in general. We also would like to stress that these are merely ideas and that management will differ from case to case and therapist to therapist. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. For this case, let's imagine a 70-year-old male that had a total knee replacement one week ago. The surgery was successful, the wound is healing nicely, and there are no complications whatsoever. First, we need to set expectations straight. How long will it take is a question that is often asked. Well, we can use this study from Yang et al. to inform our patients. As you can see, in the optimal case, the graphs suggest that the largest pain improvements will have happened around four to five months. Function is a bit earlier, at about three months. About 80% or more of patients are eventually satisfied with the surgery, as indicated by several studies. Personally, I find it of value to discuss with the patient that the improvements will not follow a straight line. There are going to be days that the surgery seems like a mistake. Most often, these days are followed by a subsequent improvement. When telling this in advance, the patient might feel a bit more comfortable when it happens. Make sure your patient understands that you alone cannot mediate recovery. They have a lot of responsibility in their own rehab. Our first goal is to control pain and increase range of motion. The two most important aids for pain control are ice and analgesia. Range of motion exercises should be explained as early as possible, and ideally, he was already taught these in the hospital. We will show him different options to increase range of motion so he can choose which one suits him best. It is important that he will push himself a bit here. When the range of motion exercises are clear, we can measure his baseline range of motion. Safe ambulation and taking stairs is a must, so make sure that the patient knows how to do this with crutches. Due to the postoperative arthrogenic inhibition, the muscles around the knee will not work properly. We need them back working hard as soon as possible so atrophy is minimized. This is where our exercises come in. There are numerous goals we can set for the patient depending on his or her activity level. Progressions will not be made when excessive swelling, pain or soreness result from the exercises. A bit of DOMS is okay though. Let's start off with weight bearing. Make sure the patient grabs a chair or a couch for safety purposes. The weight can be shifted from side to side or front to back. As a progression, you might let the patient take a step or fully load the operated leg without support of the other. A further option is flexing the knees while performing the same exercises. This will generate an external flexion moment, making the quads have to counter this force. We can transfer nicely into balance exercises if this all is possible. Options are walking over a straight line, balancing on one leg, touching cones with the uninvolved leg, closing your eyes while standing in tandem, lunge position or on one foot, etc. There are numerous options. A second goal to set our sit to stance. We can use two simple options to progress and regress the exercises over here. One is the chair height, the lower the tougher. The other is foot placement, placing the operated leg more to the back or placing the uninvolved leg to the front can make the transfer harder so these can be explored. We can assume that the patient's quads are currently unwilling to work, at least for the most part. The patient will use a hip strategy for many tasks, so including an isolated quad exercise is necessary to regain quad strength. If you think this is possible with something like a squat, I highly encourage you to measure their quadriceps force production and symmetry index. You will see that a lot is lacking and that the peak force will eventually plateau on an undesirable level without isolation exercises. I personally do not throw this exercise out ever during rehab. It will just be made progressively heavier if pain and strength allows. Now that that's settled, we can talk about different walking and motor function exercises. The simplest solution is basically telling your patient to go for a walk and progress if pain allows. Make sure to take the 24 hour response into account here. Further options for motor function are stepping and stopping, sidestep, tiptoeing, turning, walking backwards, speed walking, movement symmetry exercises, or the balance exercises we discussed earlier. The last thing that I'll cover in this video is the eccentric control of the involved limb while climbing downstairs. 
This seems to be particularly hard for most patients, but what's so hard about it? Let's break this down. It is simply a tough quadriceps exercise since the knee travels forward on full body weight, increasing the external moment arm and thus the demands of the quads. Adding to this, the lower you go, the higher the flexion angle, which again means more work for the quads. It's not rocket science. An option I like to use is a much lower step down with an external cue for the knee to travel forward. The height can then be progressed up. I hope this covers a notable part of early and mid-stage rehab. Let me know in the comments down below how you like to approach this. I'm Extra Physio Tutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.